Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, if you're on Facebook, make sure and check us out daily Bible podcast. Just look under community groups. We would love for you to be a part of our private secret group. This is making you <laughs> want to come. The Insider Society. I don't know. We would love to have you there. <laughs> a private a secret group. We want to have you there. Well, okay. I just got to share that in this group, I love how everyone encourages each other. Last week, Tammy posted, today marks 243 of 365 days, which means that we are 67% completed um, with the Bible. And so for those of you who started January, that's for those of you who started January 1. And we, of course, know that we have friends who have throughout the year have joined us and are back a ways. But one of the comments to this post was, I have never stuck it out this long reading through the Bible. Yay. I'm, and I know that that one person's not alone, that there have Mm -hmm. others who are saying, I've never made it this far. So thank you. And so we are just, I, I'm just so excited that our friends are being encouraged and encouraging each other. That's what's in, that's, what's fun about this is that they're encouraging each other to keep going, to stay in the word and to learn. And so that's so cool. Okay. So today we are reading Daniel seven, Daniel eight, and Daniel 5. Okay, so Daniel 7, King Nebuchadnezzar has passed away and Belshazzar takes the throne in Babylon. I kind of like King Nebuchadnezzar, even though he had some bad parts, he had some good parts too. He did. He, he, He was a conflicted man. I mean, he had highs and he had low lows. And he, he glorified God many times, so... Yeah. I mean, we might get up in heaven like, hey, Neb, how's it going? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Belshazzar takes over. And early in his first year of reigning, Daniel had a dream. And boy, <laughs> does Daniel have some doozies of a dream. Like, I've just got to say, his dreams are some doozies. I was and like, I'm so glad Michelle's describing this one because I'm like, wow. I I just like... Oh, anyway. Okay. Let's jump into this dream. So in this dream, he saw a great storm and four huge beasts coming out of the water. And so there were lion. There was a lion. The first one was a lion with eagle's wings, but the wings were plucked off. Or I don't know. Like, how would you know he had wings if they're gone? I I, I know. (laughs) Yes. Then we had a bear that had three ribs in its mouth. Then we see a leopard that had four bird's wings on its back and four heads. So some of the some of the research that I that I did said each animal is mighty but dominates its prey in a different oh. way. The lion devours, the bear crushes, and the leopard springs upon its prey. Hmm. So then the fourth beast, like really, we didn't get a whole lot of description with the fourth beast. We just heard that it was terrifying, dreadful, and very strong and had four or had 10 horns. Maybe like he didn't want to describe it very well because it would just scared everybody and they wouldn't have went to read it. Yeah. I don't know. And this fourth beast was different from all the other beasts. But remember, at the end of this vision, like... Daniel was trembling. So this these had to be some very scary, yeah. scary beasts. And this last one symbolizes a really, a really nasty leader full of pride and arrogance who will try to consume all. So remember, the lion devours, the bear crushes, and the leopard springs upon its prey. The fourth one tries to consume all. And scholars are really torn as to who these four beasts symbolize. Like scholars really are. I, it took me a long time to look through this and try to figure this out. That's why I'm like so glad you, guys, you had this part. <laughs> because 
as I'm reading, I, I thought I got from it what I thought, but then I was like, no, I haven't spent time really trying to figure this one out. And so one group I read about believed that, that these were the four empires and ne- and Nebuchadnezzar that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about when um, he had the statue dream and, um, oh. and that the strong and mighty nations are going to oppress the smaller nations. So that was one thought. Others felt that the beast represented Babylon, of course, Nebuchadnezzar, Greece, Rome, and they really weren't sure about that last one. And still others are wondering if and when these prophecies were fulfilled. Were they fulfilled then? Are they slowly Mm -hmm. being filled up until Jesus came? Or are they going to be fulfilled in the future? Um, So, I mean... I, I don't know. But what we do know is that Daniel was left terrified of what he saw. And then before the vision ended, Daniel saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world. His rule is eternal. He will never end and his kingdom cannot be destroyed. And again, While this final piece is good news, and believe me, friends, this final piece is good Mm -hmm. news. The vision was so graphic and heavy that Daniel was left terrified, Mm. terrified. And and then Daniel has another vision during King Belshazzar's third year. And here is where... I've got to say, I'm going to put it on you to do your own study on this. And I apologize, but this is where I didn't get to it as I was putting my notes together because I put all of my time into that, (laughs) into, into the other chapter, into that first vision that we were talking about, because the second vision, I just didn't, I just didn't have the time. So I apologize. And that's where I say, have it's fun. on it's on you, my friend, to to look <laughs> it up yourself. Um, but it was another vision that was heavy. It was another yeah. vision that had a lot of symbolism. And um, it was another vision that is should be. Well, it's another vision that shows that God is God and he is sovereign over all mm-hmm. and he is stronger than we could ever imagine or ever hope for. Yeah, and I, I think that's good because we do need to like wrestle these things out. And sometimes some things will take more time and that's okay. Like, but I don't want to move past this too fast, which is Daniel 7, 13 through 14. And this is um quoting there, as my vision continued that night, I saw someone like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority honor and sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. And what a message for a people whose kingdom was just destroyed. Mm. So like, like you said, Daniel was terrified of these, but then here comes, here comes the one like the son of man. It's approaching the ancient one that's sovereign. It's like, whew, mm-hmm. at least that dream ended well. If it did, yeah. <laughs> if it just ended with all those other stuff, that would have been hard. So, yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, good. I love that part of it. The rest of you are like, whoa, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. But um, Daniel 5 tells the story of Belshazzar's feast. And Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, holds a great feast for a thousand of his lords, which he profanes the sacred vessels taken from the temple in Jerusalem by using them to drink wine and praise his God. So they go like, oh, bring me those goblets and let's get drunk (laughs) and do all kinds of bad things. Um, But during the festivities, a mysterious hand, like this is one of my favorite things, um, appears and writes a message on the wall, which no one can interpret. I just want Steven Spielberg or someone to just make this Mm -hmm. like into a movie yeah, um, with this floating hand. And the queen recalls Daniel who interpreted dreams and enigmas for Nebuchadnezzar 
Belshazzar's, Belshazzar, Belshazzar's predecessor. And Daniel's brought before the king and rebukes him for his arrogance and for not humbling himself before God despite the humbling of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel then interprets the writing Mene, Mene, Tekel, Apshran. I don't know how you say that last word, but explaining that God has numbered Belshazzar, Belshazzar's kingdom and brought it to an end, that Belshazzar has been weighed and found wanting, and that his mm. kingdom will be divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And then that night, Belshazzar is killed and Darius the Mede takes the kingdom. So it was just like, they were just thinking they were all so cool drinking from these holy, mm-hmm. holy things. And God's like, oh, no, we are not doing that. And writes on the wall. I mean, yeah. it's just so dramatic. I love it. Um, and then in Daniel 8, in this chapter, Daniel recounts a vision of a ram and a goat. And he sees a ram with two high horns, one that is higher than the other. And it pushes westward and northward and southward, becoming great. And then a goat with a prominent horn between its eyes appears from the west and attacks the ram, breaking its two horns. And the goat becomes very significant, but at the height of its power, its large horn is broken. In its place, four notable horns grow toward the four winds of heaven. Again, when you're reading and you're trying to picture this in your mind, it's like, okay, this is all right. This is interesting. So out of one of the horns, this this one is just so funny because I could just picture, I don't know. <laughs> one of the horns comes a little horn <laughs> that grows exceedingly great, moving toward the south, the east, and the beautiful land, which is interpreted as Israel. And this horn becomes powerful and challenges the host of heaven, throwing some stars to the ground and even challenging the prince of hosts. It takes away the daily sacrifice and throws down the place of its sanctuary. Daniel is disturbed. No kidding. <laughs> this vision. I would be too. <laughs> I just pictured this little like, I don't know. Have you ever seen where they do like the pieces of fruit on videos and they put like a human face and mouth on it and it's like mm-hmm. this little talking fruit. This is what I totally picture this little horn like, hey. Yeah. Know. Yeah. It's like what? Okay. Daniel is disturbed by the vision and seeks interpretation an angel named uh, this part's cool an angel named gabriel explains that the ram represents the king of the media and persia and the goat represents the king of greece with prominent horn being its first king and the four horns represent the four kingdoms that will arise from the nation but none with the same power as the first the little horn that becomes great represents a wicked king who will defy the most high harm the saints and try to exchange and set times and laws. The king will hold power for a time, times, and a time, half time, but will eventually be destroyed. And unlike Michelle, I'm like, I don't have time to dig into this. So I would love to hear if any of you have dug into this. And um, yes, it's just like, I took it at face value and did not dig into all the things. But The vision leaves Daniel exhausted and Mm. sick for days, but eventually gets up and he goes about the king's business pondering the vision. Mm. I mean, that's like overwhelming the senses types of vision and all the horns and all the creatures. And then the angel Gabriel comes to him. I mean, so cool. cool. Yeah. And so he's there passed out for a couple days trying to figure out what just happened (laughs) wow okay let's contemplate this during a break while we hear from our sponsor and then we'll come back with the word of the day stay tuned okay so the word of the day is weighed and weighed is to ascertain the heaviness of something. So like when I go to the doctor, they always weigh me. Mm. And unfortunately, the the scale is always honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's honest weight. <laughs> so or to weigh is to consider carefully, especially by balancing opposing factors or aspects in order to reach a choice or conclusion to evaluate. So today we read in Daniel Five, Daniel 5, 27, you have been weighed on the balances and have not measured up. 
that was again in Daniel five. And it just made me, uh, it made me think of a popular film back, I don't know, maybe 20 years or so ago called A Knight's Tale. It might and... be popular around the Goyer house these days. Oh, is it? Is it? But there's a couple parts. I'm like, look away at this part. Right. I you can't now. watch this. You can't watch this. Well, in A Knight's Tale, Count Adamer says to William Thatcher during a jousting, jousting competition, you have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting. And um, and then at the end, of course, um, can I give a spoiler of alert? Yeah. Okay. William Thatcher gets to say the same thing to the count. Um, and anyway, you probably know the pain of being weighed by others. They evaluate you mm-hmm. and determine your worth determined on what they see. And sometimes what they see is pretty spot on. And sometimes it's not. Well, here's, here's really where I was, what I was thinking when, um, when I was like, way, because there are times that I feel that, that people sort of weigh us. But when it's all said and done, there is only one mm-hmm. opinion that really matters. And that's God. And God has already decided to measure us in a different way, to weigh us. You and I sin, and no matter how hard we try, we do. I, I should say, no matter how how hard we try not to sin, we do. Yeah, we don't and, really try to sin. I mean, at least we I know. Not trying to I know. Sin. I'm trying not to sin, <laughs> try but not. I do. And God knows that. And just as we're reading, he wove an incredible story to show how much he cared for his people and for you and I. And he sent his son to die on the cross as an atonement for our sin. He longs to make us better people. He longs to weigh us in such a way that we look righteous before him. That's what he's hoping for. And the good news is, is that we do please him when we come with, to him with our pain, with our praise, with our time, with our love, with just being. Remember, he is there. He is the God who is there. He is here. And that's what he's longing for, is for us to be with him. But what makes us worthy? What makes us worthy when we're on those scales? Nothing that we've done all that Christ has done on that cross for us. So we don't need to gain gain the latest promotion or have the largest following on social media or to win an Oscar or a Nobel Priest Prize to make any difference. And if you're in competition with someone, be in competition with yourself. Yeah. You you've all but here's the thing, you've already won in regards by reading through the Bible in almost a year and by being two thirds done some of you in the Facebook community are beginning new habits of yes. walking every day or exercising every day. Others are watching what they eat. And maybe you have a habit of journaling or memorizing scripture, or perhaps it's spending more time with your spouse or a close friend for new accountability. But but above all, and so I'm I'm saying that's good. That's good measurements. That's good weighing. But above all, do not weigh or measure yourself by what others say of you consider what God has to say about about you because he above all is the one who weighs us in the end Mm -hmm. so good and as I was thinking of this and thinking of the word weighed and there's like such highs and lows in these in today's reading I mean there's those really scary dreams and then the son of man and then there was the writing on the wall and then there's a new king it's just like up and down and our lives are like that. There's this tapestry and there's moments of triumph and despair and pride and then humility. And just like King Belshazzar Belshazzar in Daniel was measured by God and found wanting due to misplaced priorities, the fierce beasts also, there's all the great, were they good? Were they bad? What was going on with them? They rose and fell. The horns, there's powerful horns that broke off. I mean, it's all these different things that are being weighed and there's shifting sands. Like it's powerful. It's not powerful. What's going on? Who's the king? Um, but whether it's like Michelle was saying, validation from peers or job titles or social media followers, followers or any other fleeting metrics, we constantly are trying to measure up. Mm-hmm. But I love what Michelle was saying too, that here is that timeless message from Daniel 
like true worth isn't found in this temporary validations or accolades of the world, but in the eternal embrace of God, of God, our creator, the one who created us, like being in his embrace. That's what matters. There's other ways of, or numbers or whatever. That doesn't matter. God scales are different. He weighs us not by our worldly achievements, but by our hearts and our faith and our commitment to grow in his grace. So the next time we feel the weight of the world's expectations, which I think pretty much every day, somehow we're going to feel the weight of the world's expectations pressing down on us um, or the allure of worldly powers pulling on us. We can remember this and remember all the crazy stuff in Daniel that Mm -hmm. are, we need to ground our worth, not in these standards of the world, but in God's love and unwavering love and his purposes. Our journey with the highs and lows is not about measuring up to the world, ever changing standards. It's about aligning to God's eternal purpose for us. He is the one that we're going to stand before. He's going to weigh us. And he's the things that are going to matter are the things that are not um, from the earth. It's all the internal stuff. Um, so you're invaluable not by what you achieve or possess, by simply being his child, the child of the most high God, which is forever loved and cherished. And that's that's gonna be that's gonna matter more than social media followers, the weight on the scale, the job promotions, any of those things that we are valuable just by being his child. And he's forever cherishing us and loving us. He is forever loving us and cherishing us. Those words are so true. And I love that because of that, we can, in a sense, rewrite Matthew 5, 27. You've been weighed on the balances and have measured up. We are mm, valuable because to our of king. Jesus, because of Jesus, because of Jesus, we are valuable to our king. We are, we can stand righteous before God. And that is such good, <sighs> good news today. So, Trisha, will you pray for us today? Hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, I think there's so many things on our our mind and there's so many standards in this world. And the standards that are cool now weren't cool Hmm. 20 years ago. (laughs) They're not going to be cool 20 years from now. I mean, it's ever shifting. It's ever changing. There's powers that are rising and falling and Greeks and Romans and uh, Egypt and pharaohs and all these babylonians i mean all these world powers that were so prideful and had thought they had so much control you weighed them and you found them wanting and they didn't measure up and they're gone um and we can see that through history we can see it through in the bible and through all of history lord and what matters is our hearts and as hard as it must have been for Daniel to see these very scary visions and this confusing visions, he also got to see the son of God coming and approaching the throne and just the glory of that. Um, and I thank you that someday when we get to see um, Christ face to face, that that we will be found not wanting, that we will be weighed and found worthy because of because of Jesus. And I thank you for that. And just help us to remember that, that whenever we get overwhelmed, because we don't feel like we're doing enough, we aren't enough, we aren't achieving enough, that it doesn't matter. What, what matters is that we have that relationship with you. And I thank you and praise you in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Daniel 6, Daniel 9, 2 Chronicles 36, 22 through 23, Ezra 1, 1 through 11, 1 Chronicles 3, verses 17 through 19a. And I want to take a second to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go check them out today, lifeaudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.